Hi, cozy friends. 10K. What? What? I, I'm, I'm imagining like 10,000 people in a, in a room. I can't. <laughs> Thank you. When I started this channel, I thought I would kind of just be sharing my love of gaming with the other people in the Instagram gaming community. I did not think that it would grow to be something that one, I am so passionate about and care so much about creating content for and that other people will actually enjoy it. Thank you so much for giving me that motivation and for giving me this outlet, this creative outlet, this personal outlet. It's been so fulfilling, especially when I have other things like school and stuff going on that can sometimes feel like it's pulling a lot of my energy just to have this that I can release all of my self into and really just feel like I'm I'm nurturing myself and my passions. It's been amazing, so thank you so much. And just seeing from a lot of the comments and the DMs that I get from you all, it seems like this has been able to be a space for a lot of you that you feel like you might not have had in terms of representation or seeing somebody play the same games as you. Just a space, whether it's in the comments, in my Discord, on my TikTok, whatever it is that you feel like you can have this community. I'm so happy. I'm so, it makes me so happy. Thank you for creating that space as well. I'm really happy to grow. I'm really excited to grow. Of course, all creators want to be able to grow, to kind of have the resources to devote more of their time to their channel. But I also really love where we're at in this community and I never want to lose that feeling. I really love being able to respond to all of your comments and DMs and I love recognizing some of you in a lot of the comments. I'm going to do whatever it takes to maintain that that feeling of family and community. It, that's what it is. It really just feels like a cozy little family. I hope that growth will only mean that cozy family expanding and growing and not feeling like we're losing that. So in celebration of 10,000 subscribers, here are 10 cozy games that I'm really excited about right now. Some I've played recently and loved, some I am just now playing or planning on playing soon, and others haven't released yet and I really need them to release. <laughs> so I'll be doing some in each category and I'll start with the ones that I'm playing now. The first is Calico and I'm including this one because I just finished the playthrough of it. I love this game so much. Finishing it has made me appreciate it even more and I can now say it's one of the most charming games and it's pretty original, which I really appreciate. I just really feel like there aren't games like this. You know, there's games with fetch tasks and there's games where you're running a cafe, but just the blend of those two, the world building and the characters is so unique. I've just never seen anything like it. I also love that running the cafe is not a part of the game that really pulls too much of your time and energy. You kind of make the food and drinks for the cafe when you want to, you buy the recipes if you want to, and you can focus on that if you want, but it's not something that's vital to the game and the progression of the storyline. I love that there's enough tasks to complete, but not too many where you are you feel like you're doing the same thing and it gets repetitive. It's just an amazing game and the developers that made it are just a really small indie company and I love that and I, I think they're doing amazing work and I'm gonna be following them forever. They have another game called Where the Bees Make Honey and I think I'm gonna try that soon because I love this game so much. They, they must have other great games. Also, they have a lot of updates. They just released an update where you can put furniture outside of the cat cafe. Any game that keeps providing content and <laughs> updates is a game and a developer that you know cares about the players and listens to the players. The next is Cozy Grove, which I have a video on if you haven't seen it. And I think at first I was like, okay, I like it, but I just feel like, I don't know, there's something missing. And I think I had to learn about the intentionality of the game's pacing to really appreciate it. So apparently the developers made it so that you can only do so many tasks each day so that you're not binge playing the game. It's made to be put down and I think that's kind of a innovative idea in the world of gaming. There's not a lot of games I have like that because I want to get into it for a couple hours or so, but I feel like you would have to go to mobile games if you wanted that like quick serotonin boost. I love that there's a Switch game that does that for you. There's a, there's a purpose to it. There's a time and a place. And I think the things that I 
felt like I needed to knock it for at first are its value and are what makes it great. So definitely if you heard anything about people not liking that aspect of it, I would urge you to try and see if you can appreciate it for quick play uniqueness of it. The next is Littlewood and it's kind of an old style Zelda game in terms of how it looks and the art style. It also has the most original concept of this is life after you've defeated this evil entity and now you're in the town you were in before that entity came <laughs> and now you're doing the work to rebuild the town and rebuild those relationships with the people and I think it's such a good idea. This is a game that I've been appreciating recently because there's a kind of stress to a lot of farming, life building games in terms of time limits. Like you have to do something in a certain amount of time or the days are timed or whatever. So you almost feel like you have to maximize your schedule throughout the day and do everything perfectly to be able to do what you need to do in time. And I like that this game isn't time constrained and so you can kind of relax as you're doing stuff, go at your own pace. And I think the level of customization is so high. There's just so much customization you can do. And there's not a lot of games that have that level of customization. You know, even Animal Crossing, there's certain limitations of what you can put where and da 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 and it's not too focused on the aesthetic aspects of it so that you get wrapped up in the aesthetics it's just customized almost for practical purposes i think that's cool i'm excited to keep playing this because i kind of only started and haven't haven't really got into it and, and made a dent into the storyline so i'm excited to keep playing this game and the last one is stardew which i know i know i talk about stardew in every single video i possibly can any chance i get i just think it's a masterpiece of a game it is a masterpiece of a game and i'm bringing it up now why i'm excited about it now is because starting the let's play of it renewed my my passion and my love for it and so I started my own separate <laughs> save file again and have been so into it. I play it every night after I get all my work done. It's so fulfilling and it's it's amazing to me anytime I start a new save file how rewarding it is to do the exact same thing I've done a million times already with my other save files you know like getting through the first parts completing those first tasks with like a coop and getting to 40 in the mines none of that gets old no matter how many times I do it and I think that says so much about this game again a game created by one person incredible kind of on the flip side of what I was talking about with little there is kind of the need for maximizing the full efficiency of each day but it's really fun to kind of figure that out when you've done it so many times because I've played Stardew since like 2017. It's really fun to kind of figure out how quickly can I get the community center done when I know everything about this game. Kind of challenging yourself in different ways whether it's a new farm or now you can kind of remix the community bundle items. I love it so much and if you haven't started a new save file on Stardew yet Give it a try and try some different things. And it's like playing a whole new game. It's amazing with the same characters that you know and love. And the next games are games that I have but haven't gotten around to getting into yet. But I'm really excited to get into it both because of hype and recommendations from specific people. The first is Pikiniku, which I made a TikTok about it. I made an Instagram post. I made a reel about it because I didn't know anything about it. Finally, a couple people commented about it and I was like, okay, I'm gonna check it out. And I just had never seen it on the eShop. I'd never seen anybody talking about it on Instagram. Instagram and I see people talking about every game ever. I had not seen anything about this game and as soon as I read the description and watched the preview in the trailer I was like this looks like a game that is made for me. It is dystopian with cute Gumby animation styles <laughs> and there's a co-op option which I'm the most excited for and so many people have told me that it's made them laugh out loud as they were playing and I love games like that. I love games with a sense of humor. So I'm so excited to play this. Would love to hear if you guys played it and if you've loved it. The next is Carto. So sometimes I'll get a game and I'll be like, you guys, I'm so excited to try this. I'm gonna try it this weekend. And then I'll play it for like five minutes and get distracted with something and then absolutely forget I have it. It's out of my mind. It is erased from my memory. And that's what happened with Carto. <laughs> Um, Lexi Games, who I met through TikTok, she's a Twitch streamer and she's hilarious and amazing. She recommended it to me and I was like, okay, I'm so excited, I'm gonna play it. And then I <laughs> literally like turned it on and 
forgot about it. So I'm really excited to actually get into this game. It's an exploration puzzle adventure game where you're moving around the parts of the map to get to where you need to go. And I think that's such an original idea and would make a game so interesting and so engaging. And the animation style is so cute. <sighs> it's it's sinful that I haven't played, I haven't gotten into this yet. Um, hello, this is editing me. <laughs> Here to say I cannot count, I cannot count for the life of me. And I, I didn't do 10, I did nine. So here's the 10th one I'm excited about. And it is Roki. And I'm excited about Roki because I've been recommended it since like my first couple of TikToks. And I, again, I just never got it because it wasn't on sale and I had too many other games in my backlog, but I finally got it. It's this amazing um, kind of Nordic mythology based adventure RPG where you're solving the mysteries of the story, you're solving puzzles. I kind of think of it similar to the play style of Breath of the Wild. Very different graphics, really beautiful, amazing kind of color scheme. There's riddles, there's monsters you can make friends with, and yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to get into this one. Definitely check it out. I've heard so many, so many good things. Okay, and these next games, it's heartbreaking. It's bittersweet because I'm so excited that they're coming out but I am heartbroken that they aren't out yet because I want nothing more than to be able to play them and I can and will make a whole video on unreleased games that I'm excited about because there's so many Little Witch in the Woods, Bear and Breakfast, I can think of so many but right now these are the ones I'm most excited for. The first is Coral Island which if you follow my TikTok you've also seen me talk about because I'm so excited about it. Think a 3D Stardew Valley with amazing diversity, insane character design and animation, the cutest town, a conservationist diving theme to it, mermaids that I think you can date, house customization, it's just perfect. It looks like the perfect game. And I hate to put a lot of pressure on them. I feel like <laughs> there's a lot of pressure on this game to be perfect, but I can really see this being another comfort game like Stardew is to me, where it's just, it never gets old. You can constantly work on your farm and do new things and start new save files. And it seems like a game that they might add updates to, which is awesome. I'm so excited about it. I I can talk about it all day. <laughs> and it will be coming out October of 2021. That is the planned release. I will be playing the crap out of that game on here. I'll probably do a playthrough, a let's play of it because I'm so excited for it. And the next is Paralives, which is basically what Sims could be if it wasn't what it is now. <laughs> so very similar to Sims, it's a realistic life sim where you can build houses and customized para people I believe they're called with like the utmost freedom. There's sliding measurements for like windows and doors and walls, there's color wheels. Like think literally everything people complain about with the Sims. Paralabs was like, oh I got you. We're good. We got that. Uh and I'm just excited for something new in this category of realistic life sims where Sims has basically dominated for the past I don't know how many years. I'm so excited for a new competitor, both to just have this different new game to try and I'm really excited to see if it kicks EA's butt into gear and they actually start listening to their players. But I'm just excited about this separate from that because I think it's probably going to be an amazing game and I don't even want to compare it to Sims. Paralives does not have a release date yet but you can keep up with them on Twitter and they release a few YouTube videos here and there. And the last game of this video that I want to come out like yesterday is Witchbrook. So Witchbrook is a RPG where you're a witch in a school for wizardry? Witchery? <laughs> a witch school where you're learning magic, you're building relationships with the teachers and your classmates, and you're doing side activities like fishing and growing crops, forging ingredients for your spells, learning magic and spells, fine tuning those skills. You have a rival, you have a date for prom. Witchbrook is very TBD in terms of release date, so that's unfortunate, but it, we know it's coming and I cannot be more excited for it because I'm just imagining everything that's great about Stardew, which it's the same developing company, Chucklefish, so I'm just imagining Stardew, but witchery. 
magic cute little widgets. <laughs> it's so cute. I'm so excited for it. So those are all the games I'm excited about. I'd love to hear yours, whether you're playing them now, you're excited to start them, they're on your wish list, or ones that are unreleased. I'll definitely do a video on games that are unreleased that I'm excited about. So let me know if there's any that you're like, you have to include this. Again, thank you so, so much for supporting me. I love you. Stay cozy. Bye.